everybody needs chosen. And this is a schos of the Zayara Kaddish to merit getting married, to merit having children, to merit that your children should have children, to merit that you're, you should live to see your grandchildren, and so much more. So this is probably one of the most important things that we, we all, all need schosim for. And this is for everyone, but especially if Hashem puts someone near you that is not religious, within your, that you have their phone number, in your family or a neighbor, within your reach, especially if you have a sibling. Sometimes siblings say, it's not my problem, or they get angry at the sibling for not being from, or they reject their sibling, they say, it's not my problem, what does that have to do with me? This is going to be amazing for you, because you're going to realize the tremendous schar that you get for being involved. And not missing out on the Nisayan completely of why Hashem gave you this sibling or nephew or niece or grandchild or neighbor. And it, this is all inclusive for everybody in Klal Yisrael, especially if you realize this is like if you're making $100,000 a year and you have a chance to make $10 million. In Schosim, this is what this is. And I'm going to say it in Hebrew and I'm going to translate it. It's from Zaira Kaddish, Parashas Truma, Daf, Kuf, Chaf Tes, 129. He starts off very powerful. The one who is righteous, Oisei HaTzadik, Tzorich Lirdoif Acha Harasha. If you are a good, righteous person, you have a chiyuv, a responsibility. He says, Tzorich, you must run after those who are sinning. Now, a lot of people right away fail at this. We don't think that that's not my job. My job is to focus on my ruchnius. My job is to get to shul. And when I pass by the park and you see people there, whatever, you look the other way. And he says, no. Zayra Kaddish says, no. You have to. You have a chiyuv. Tzarech lirdoif acha harasha. We're not going to get into the punishments that it says, very strong punishments if you ignore. We're not going to get into mi psarech altas alam. If it's a relative, you get even more of a lav to ignore the spiritual plight just like financial or physical, you're not allowed to ignore, and, and so too for spiritual. And we're not going to get into the punishments and all of that that we're talking about. Just let's look at what you get. You have to run after those who are sinning, falling away from the crown of Hashem. And be willing to pay the full price to buy them, right? means time, money, effort, Whatever it takes to acquire them, to win them over, full price, whatever it is. In order that by you being kind of this person, you're acquiring them, you're winning them over that they trust you and you're a secure, good person, you will purify them from their spiritual filth, from their bad matzav that they're in. And then when you do that, you're subduing the evil powers of the satan. When you do that, and you're makar of somebody, Hashem considers it as if you created his renewed soul. This is your child. A person could have 100, 200, 300 children. And this is the this great accomplishment, this avoida that you're doing, is more precious to Hashem than any other praise or service that you can do for Hashem. It's more chashev than anything else. It's more chashev than davening. We have stories of tzaddikim that gave up their davening. We have stories of tzaddikim that gave up their learning. There's nothing more precious that you can do for Hashem than to go ahead and to do everything humanly possible to try to bring in those lost souls. And the payment that you're going to get from this is more than anything else that you could possibly do. Right? We do a lot of things for Hashem, for schar. We do a lot of things for reward in the next world. There's nothing that comes close to this. This farm teaches us that when you makar of somebody, all the mitzvahs that they do from then on for the rest of their life and all of their generations, you get a commission. It's more than you can possibly do yourself. And the mashal that they say in this farm is a person who's working for himself versus somebody who opens up a company and has 20 people working for him. 
who's going to make more money? So when you go ahead and you bring people, tachas, kanfei, ashchina, you are going to be making commission from all of these people doing all the mitzvahs and their children and grandchildren forever. Why is this so important to Hashem? Ma'u atam, says the Zayra Kodesh ki hugaram acher, because you subdued the forces of the evil Satan. You, you took somebody back. The Satan has this guy under his control, right? He's like, like now, we, we know that what, what it is to have somebody who's captive. And you rescued him. And by doing that, you uplift the honor and praise of Hashem. And that's what it says by Aaron Akoyin. He turned away many people from sitting, from sinning. And then afterwards it says, My covenant, my bris was with Aaron. Says the Zaira Kaddish. It wasn't because of Aaron that he was so holy. We know he was equal to Maisha. Aaron was shakal to Maisha Rabbeinu. But that's not why Brisi Haisi Itai. Brisi Haisi Itai, my covenant was with him. Hashem said, my bris is specifically with Aaron because Verabim Heshem Meyavim. And how did he do it? So luckily, we have a Mishnah in Pirkei Avis that tells us exactly what Aaron Akayin did. The Zayir HaKadosh is telling us to be like Aaron Akayin. And the Mishnah tells us, Havei mitalmidav shel Aaron. Oyev shalom, v'raidev shalom. Oyev es habriyais, umakarven l'tayra. First, it says, Oyev es habriyais, he loved them. And then it says he was makarven l'tayra. And of course, everybody knows what it says in Tanya Perek, Lamed Beis, the heart of Tanya Lev, says that, Oyev es habriyais, it should have said, Oyev es hayyehudim, Oyev es hayyisraelim, he says, why Briyais? Briyais is the lowest level. It means creation, creature, like a cow. Even though they weren't acting in any, any hush of way, still he loved them just because they are a Jew, even though based on their actions, they were acting like a behema. They were acting just like a Briyais, just like a creation. And still he loved them. And through his love, that's the method of being Mekar of Lutaira. There is no other way. Nobody became a Baal Tshuva because somebody yelled at them and was marachik them and looked down at them and said, what's the matter with you? You're ruining your life. What are you doing? That never drew anybody back to Torah. It says the Zayir HaKadosh, Kol Misha Eiches Biyat HaRasha, somebody who holds, and he holds, the hold, seeks out the sinner and he leads him by the hand. Umishtadel, and he tries. He's not talking about success. Success is Hashem's job, but you try. You try to help him to, to go away from the evil path. Just by trying, look what you get. He becomes elevated in three ways. You're going to get an aliyah, you're going to get raised up that nobody else, the biggest tzaddik in the world and the biggest hamad chacham in the world, the biggest Ben Tyre in the world, nobody gets what you get. That's what he says. Number one, by you're trying to do this, you're fighting with the Satan over, over a captive. You're causing the power of Satan to be weakened. Number two, he causes Hashem's glory to be elevated. Three, the Gairim Lahamid Kala Oilam. He causes the entire universe, both the upper and lower spheres, to be sustained. By what? By going to the 7-Eleven, by passing by the park, and saying, guys, what's doing? How are you? And showing them love. Look what you do. You sustain the upper and lower worlds. And on anyone who does this, it's not that hard. We do harder things for Hashem. That that it says about Aaron Akain, that could be said about you. By just trying, mishtadel, trying through love, that's all we have to do. And we get this lush in this, this language. My covenant was with him for life and peace. And such a person will merit to see. Children to his children. And what does that mean? It means you have to get married. It's a to get married. 
It's a schus to have children. You can't have grandchildren if you don't have children. It's a schus that your children will get married. It's a schus that your married children should have children. Some people struggle with that so much. And it's a schus that you should be alive to see it. You're going to see your grandchildren. He's going to merit reward in this world. What, 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 what are we doing here? We have opportunities all around us. And listen to what he says. You're going to get reward in this world, get reward in the next world. No harsh judgments of prosecuting forces will be able to judge you negatively. You get a free pass, so to speak. Not ba'ilam azeh and not ba'ilam abba. Again, kol ba'alei hadinim. Lo'i yichaylam ladun oisai. Why? Because you're not, you're not a, into ba'alei tshuva, because you're a yid. You're a yid and you care about the jewels that fell away from the crown. And he says more. Nichnas b'shneim asa sha'arim. After you pass away, you're going to go up, you're going to go ki'ilo, I guess, in the elevator. And you're going to hit penthouse, and it's going to go up, 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 and they're going to say, hey, you don't belong there. That's for the big tzaddikim. That's for the big The tanoim are up there. He says, Nobody can protest you from going up the 12 gates that you can never get to on our own with our own Torah and tefillah. And it says about such a person in Tehillim, Kuf Yud Beis, Gibar Ba'aretz Yazare. Dar Yisharim Yevarach. His offspring will be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Hoin v'oyshe bebeisai. Wealth and riches will be in his home. V'tzid kasai oymedes la'ad. And his righteousness will endure forever. Zarach b'achoyshech or la Yisharim. The righteous ones will merit the light that will arise in the darkness. Chanon v'rachom v'tzadik. Graciousness gracious, and full of compassion and righteousness. And the Zaira Kaddish ends off after saying all of that, that if we would comprehend what we're talking about, if, a, if, a, if people would understand, would internalize, if people would internalize what we're saying here, and realize the benefits of bringing a yid closer to his roots. Have a ozlua basrayu, virad filoin, kemanderadif basachayin. They would run after this like you run after life itself. Imagine that you have a child that is allergic to peanuts, and all of a sudden you see that something he ate, and all of a sudden you see he's starting to have an allergic reaction. Time is against you. Where's the EpiPen? You remember, you left it in the car. You go running down the stairs. You go running outside, and you see your spouse pulling out of the driveway with the minivan, driving away. What would you do? You would run after that car with all your might because the life of your child depends on you flagging down that, getting to that car, getting that EpiPen, running back, running back to save the child's life. Says the Zaira Kaddish, if you realized what you can benefit from bringing back, from trying, ishtadel, to bring back a jewel to the crown of Hashem, you would run after it like you are running after life itself. Now, somebody told me that there was a certain location, I don't want to say where, that the people were very upset because in the park, there was gathering a lot of kids who were off the derech on Shabbos. And people were very, very upset about this. There was like over a hundred kids that were coming together, smoking on Shabbos, boys and girls, and it was becoming a very, very big problem for the neighborhood. And the Rabbanim got together and people were saying, we have to shut down the park and all of that. And I'm thinking, shut down the park? Then you're just scattering them. This is the Olam Haz and the Olam Haba that we're looking for. In every single neighborhood, if you have 100 kids in the park, you have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 men and women that live there. Every Friday night, we should be going there with food, with love, with hugs. We can win them back. We have the recipe. We know exactly what's needed to be done. 
We know that they want acceptance and love. Why would we say, get out of here? And then you have to go, to, in order to get this schar, you have to go find them in a club and find them in this bar and find them over there. They're not dangerous. I could say this, I'm doing this 20 years. I brought them into my home. They're not dangerous. Okay, certain things, don't be stupid about it, whatever. But we can win this battle. We can win this battle. We have to go ahead to call to action in every community and be makarev with love, like all the tzaddikim begged us to. And this is schar that you're going to get. This is schar that's it's in the bag. To live to see your children, that they should all get married, that they should have children, that you should see their children have children, you should see your grandchildren. And when the Zayar Kaddish gives us children, it's, it probably means Yiddish Anachas and good children. And to go in Gan Eden above anything you could achieve in your life, you don't need to be like a special um, uh, Chabad guy or, or, or Sameach guy or project, uh, what's it called? Inspire. Inspire and special people. Anybody can go out there and smile. And I'm, I don't want to talk about myself, but I just want to inspire people. It was Erev Rosh Hashanah, it was Shabbos before Rosh Hashanah, and I told my kids, we need Chosim. This is about 10 years ago. I had a, a 17-year-old and a 14-year-old. So after Friday night, instead of going to learn or sleep or waste time, I said, we need Chosim before Rosh Hashanah. Let's go to the park. So near me, there were two parks. One had about, usually about 20, 30 kids, and the other one has about 60, 80. I don't want to overwhelm my kids. So I walked with them, and we went to the clo closer park, which was smaller. We got there, there were about approximately 10 boys, 10 girls, smoking cigarettes, and there was a table, and I sat down next to a boy, very cute boy. His eyes were bloodshot and all glossy. He smelled from weed and vodka, and I just sat, my, my, I'll never forget, my boys were standing right next to me, and I sat down, hi, what's your name? Where do you live? What's doing? I was just being nice. There's nothing that I did that any person here or watching this cannot do. I was just authentically nice, like as if I'm from out of town, <laughs> you know? And uh, who are you? What's doing? Whatever. And all of a sudden, another guy came, and all of a sudden, another guy came, and all of a sudden, I was surrounded by these guys. The guy behind me, was standing behind me, just got out of jail. He looked at this kid. He was like 18 years old, or 17 years old. I wanted to adopt all of them. This is what I did in Home Sweet Home, right? I want to just like hug the, why was he in jail? Because his parents threw him out, got an order of protection against him because he tried to come back in. And now when he tried and they caught him, they called the police, so he was in jail. All of our TP kids, almost a thousand kids are home. We have the medicine for this. Those who go down that road, look how far you can get to, to, to call the police on your own child and they'll tell you he's a Russia and he's this, is that. We have the medicine for that. We don't need that. It's not that I tell you to live miserably. When you're nice to them, they're nice back, which is the advice of all the G'daylum. So I'm sitting around, Not f it wasn't that long, and this kid turns to me and he says, hey, wait a second, everyone's quiet. He goes, why are you being so nice to us? Everybody hates us. Quote, I've told the story how many times? It's a true story. All my stories are true. This is a mamasha quote. Why are you being nice to us? Everybody hates us. And I don't know why I did this. I took off my glasses. I turned to him. My kids were there as, as my witness. And I said, look into my eyes. What do you see? You don't need to be a chacham. He looks in my eyes and he says, wow, you're a good guy. You don't hate us. And that was it. They saw I have no agenda. I'm not coming to be a car of them. I'm not coming to tell them off. I'm just, you're a human being. And this is, this is the way you make a connection with somebody because I care about them. And I, I really, I wish I can go out every Friday night, but that's all it takes. And then you find if you have an Arab, bring children, bring food. They're human beings. When we treat them like outcasts, they become outcasts. When we treat them like part of the community and part of the family, then eventually they get over their hardships and they stay out of jail. We don't have one TP kid, and we, I deal with tough kids. We don't have one that went through the jail system. We don't have one that's in a psych ward, psych ward, psych ward, psych ward. We don't have one, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like crazy stuff that we're beating by being nice, by making them feel comfortable. And then, and this is 
mamish the advice of everybody by raising royalty I don't make money off of it. And you'll see one after another, after another. I just saw now Mamish from, we have the Chazanish, we have the Baal Shem Tev, we have all the Tzadikim. Rabbi Vadi Yosef told parents, the kid was struggling and the father was yelling at him. He told him, kiss your kid every day and show him that you love him until he feels it. That's the medicine, until he feels it. He says, then, Kamayim apanim lepanim, kein leif adam ladam. He's gonna feel your love he is going to respond with love and he's not going to want to aggravate you. Take away all the pressure, all the rules, everything. Make him feel your love. That solves the problem. Instead of becoming this angry, seething person who wants to burn down the community and I hate you and I hate you. and We do that. We are vamping it up. And that's what the Nesiv Shalom said. That's what everybody said. Everybody except the Gaisha world that infiltrated our minds that says, oh, all of a sudden, like you don't know the kid. You need rules, consequences, boundaries, don't enable, all the stuff that ruins the medicine. So what I would like us to do, if it's your brother, I had a brother who was here, very hush of a kid sitting and learning. He says, not my problem, my parents' problem, not my problem. Not your problem? Hashem is giving you this schar. You don't even have to leave your house. It's in your house. It's bashert that you have a child like this. It's bashert you have a sibling like this. It's bashert you have a nephew, a niece, a neighbor, that's what we believe in Basharit. Hashem is giving you the chance to become a billionaire in the next world. Baduk Umunusa, according to the Zahir Kaddish, you can bet on it. More important than anything in the world, and we have so many stories, like, like the story of the Beis Yisrael, the Gai Rebbe, who gave up his Mincha on Yom Kippur and Ni'ila on Yom Kippur and Marav on Yom Kippur to schmooze with a guy to try to make a connection so one day maybe he can be Makarafim. And at the end of his life, he said, this is one, quote unquote, Avera, one sin that I don't regret doing, even though I didn't accomplish anything. He, I didn't get the account. I still don't regret it. He was Mishtadel. If you're Mishtadel and you're trying to be Makar of somebody, it's greater than davening Ni'ila with Minyan on Yom Kippur. And it's greater, Chaim Kanievsky said, look at, look at the video. They said, what should Avrechim do at night? Instead of learning, should they try to go out to save boys? And he did a Gairul Hagra, which is even more than his own Nevoah. It's Mamash Nevoah, where you open up randomly and you, you see what it says. It's Mamash, the closest thing we have to Nevoah. And he said, save the boys. Save the kids. And the whole thing, you don't just need Yechidei Skula for this. We need Am Yisrael for this. There's nobody that doesn't respond to love and you're nice to them, and you show them I care about you, and you visit them on the parks and the lakes and in the in the 7-Elevens, and then after a few times, naturally, in a nice way, you invite them over with their friends for a meal, and then they have good food. And the truth is, you can't find a TP kid who needs your food, because they're all home, and they're eating mommy's food and daddy's food. But there's so many kids out there that never the parents don't know what to do, and they're being paying a lot of money for bad advice. So for that, Klaishol has to get together. Every, every generation has its challenge. This is the challenge of our generation. There's no downside by creating in every community. We used to create Pirche for the kids, the little kids, and we create different chesed stuff. Every community should have created for anybody that has a heart or anybody, you don't even need a heart. You just need to be nice and don't judge. Rebaran Shechta, Schusiogan Alenu, walked outside Friday night. He saw four kids smoking on Shabbos. He knew and appreciated what Shabbos was. He wasn't liberal. It did not not bother him. But he knew the medicine and he, and he yelled at them. He yelled out. He said, Boys, the Chabai Chlib. Boys, I love you. If there's ever anything I can do for you, don't hesitate to come and, and knock on my door. And Sunday, that Sunday, one of the boys knocked on his door and said, Yeshiva, I need help. And he helped him. He got him a chavrusa and he put him in yeshiva and he's back. I don't know what happened with the other three. We could all say that. We could all say, boys, we care about you. Girls, we care about you. And, and we should go out after the meals and we should go find these kids and no Jew should be left behind. But what's amazing is besides for them, be selfish. You can't do anything else to get this schar in this world. There's nothing else you can do. So why not just do it for yourself if you don't care about other people? If you care about them, it's even better. Because then you would be willing to give up schar 
to get them. Over here, you don't have to give up schar. You get, you're going to gain and gain and gain and gain. And we have so many TP families that are doing that. Once your eyes open up, you see your kids in a different light. And then you see their friends in a different light. And then you see, wow. And we have so many parents years later that end up having like homes that five, 10, 15, 20 kids at their Makarov. And they see them straighten out and they see them end up getting married. And you're a part of their life. And they'll never forget you. And Hashem will never forget the time and effort and money that you put into that. And you will be repaid forever.